hello everyone welcome back to another react native video and today we are going to build a food recipe app with very cool animations you're gonna learn so much in this single video we'll be using third-party apis react native reanimated delvin image caching and so much more in this single video and if you want to build professional apps like this one then this is a video for you so without wasting any more time let me show you the demo of the app first let's reroll the application to see the welcome page where we have this ring animation and this is with the help of react native reanimated then we are redirected to home page where we see all the categories or and all the recipes will fade in these are all the categories and at the bottom you can see all the food recipes for the selected category so if i choose a different category this will load all the recipes for that one and for the recipes we'll be using masonry layout if you notice when i click on a category all the recipes just fades in from the bottom with a very cool animation and if you open a recipe this will show all the details of that recipe all the ingredients instruction and a recipe video at the top we have this favorite icon where you can mark this recipe as your favorite one and for all the images in this app we're using image caching so that images won't have to load every time so for the first time all the images will have to be loaded then after that we will just show the loaded image I just love how smooth the animation looks when we open a recipe and all the data just fades in. I'll show you how you can do that using React Native Reanimated. So this is the application that we're going to build in this video and if you are excited and you want to make this app then just follow me along. If you find this video helpful do like the video and subscribe the channel and let's get started. First we are going to use react native to make this application we will be using react native expo just follow this process to create an expo app. Then we are going to use react native navigation to navigate between different pages. For styling we will be using native wind to style our app. I have already created a video on native wind setup. So I will leave the link of the video into the description. Then we are going to use react native hero icons. You can install this library and this is their main website to have all the icons. They have three types of icons solid, mini and outline. You can use either one. Then we are going to use react native responsive screen to make our app responsive like all the fonts and height and width. We are going to have a masonry layout for our recipe list and for that we are going to use this library. Then we are going to use react native async storage to store all our image data so that we don't have to load the image again and again. After that we are going to use react native reanimated to add all the cool animations into our application that you just saw into the demo video. Then we are going to use react native youtube iframe to show a youtube video of the recipe. Then to make this happen we are also going to use react native web view for this library to work. And for our data we are going to use an API from the mail DB. They have this huge data collection for all the recipes and all the food ingredients. And if you go to their API section you will find all the APIs. Some are paid and some are free. We will be using free for the sake of this video. But if you are planning to upload your app on App Store then you need to be a supporter to have access to all of their APIs. So I have already created an application in the expo and already set up Tailwind and navigation. And I have already set up the folder structure where we have a components folder, constants for the dummy data, we have the helpers folder, navigation that you are seeing here, app navigation. Then we have a screens folder for all the screen, we have only one screen for now. If you open navigation you will see I have implemented react navigation and by default we only have one route which is home and header is shown to false. And you can see the home screen into the simulator but we're going to have a welcome screen first so let's create a welcome screen inside screens folder welcome screen.js and let's create a basic functional component like this and save this now we need to import this into app navigation as well so let's copy this home route and change this to welcome and here we need to import the welcome screen and the by default the initial route name will be welcome now we need to reload the application to see this change okay now you can see the welcome screen so let's move to welcome screen and start designing let's give this container a class name and let's have a value of flex1 justify center and item center as well then a spacing vertical of 10 and a background of ember 500 okay Let's save this and we have a nice amber background now let's remove this and use a status bar component from react native and we're going to style it with light style 
so that all the fonts in the status bar is light if we change this to dark all the fonts will go dark but we're going to use the light colors like this now here we're going to add a logo image and all the rings around this logo image so let's add a view this will be the outer ring and this will have a background of transparent white so let's give it a class name of pg white by 20 and round it full because this is a ring okay let's close this view and we're going to have the same view inside this for the second ring as well let's add a class name of pg white by 20 and round it full let's close this view and inside this view we're going to have an image which i've already stored into my assets folder that i will include into the github repo so let's add a source and here we will give the path for that image and the image is found in assets images slash welcome dot png and let's give it a style and we're going to have a width and the height of 200 pixels 200 now let's save this okay we can see the image but we don't see the rings because rings don't have padding so let's add padding let's add a padding of 5 for the first ring okay let's increase it to 8 okay much better now let's add padding of 8 to the second ring uh, let's increase it to 10 okay this looks nice now next thing we're gonna add is a view for our title and a punchline so let's add a comment first punchline and let's add a view with the class name of flex item center and spacing vertical of 2 and let's add a text for our title which will be foodie and uh, let's add another text view for our punchline and our punchline is going to be food is always right because that's true okay so uh, let's add style to our title and give it a fonts bold class and text white and a tracking widest widest okay let's copy this class for our punchline as well and we're gonna change the fonts to medium not bold okay so now we're gonna make this bigger so let's give it a text of 6xl okay it's bigger and give this a text lg for the punchline okay now it's looking nice so our welcome screen is finished but now we need to make it responsive so that it looks good on all the other devices and for that we're going to use a component it's called react native responsive screen so you can install this using this uh, command but i've already installed it so i don't need to install it so let's check out how we can use that okay here we have a wp and hp method that represents a height percentage and width percentage of the current device and if you give 70 percent of height that means 70 percent of the current device height and we can also use this for the font size as well so this will make the font size responsive and we will have a design something like this so now let's use this library into our project let's copy this import statement and uh, let's copy it here and now we can replace the fixed values like height and width let's change this to hp20 that will mean the 20 percent height of the current device and this will be hp20 as well because we're going to make sure that the aspect ratio of the picture stays the same we're also going to remove this padding and use the dynamic padding for these rings so let's add a style and give this a padding of hp 5.5 like this and let's add this padding to the first ring as well and this will be hp5 okay looking nice now we also gonna make responsive our title and the punchline so let's add a style property first let's remove these okay now let's add a style property and give this a font size of hp7 for our title and uh, let's add a style for the punchline and this time we will use the font size of hp2 okay so our welcome screen is fully responsive and as you saw in the demo these rings were animated so next thing we're gonna do is add animation to these rings and for that we're going to use a library called react native reanimated uh, this is their main website and let's get started 
okay so you can either install an expo app with reanimated installed already or you can add reanimated to your expo app you can just install this library and add this plugin into your Babel configuration this is the file that is located in your root directory this is the file and as you can see I've already added the plugin but you need to make sure that you add this plugin at the very last as you can see they are suggesting this as well so next if you are using a CLI app you need to make sure that you move to iOS folder and run this pod install command this will link the library so next let's see how we can add our animation so first thing we're gonna do is wrap our view that we're gonna animate with this animated library then we can use a shared value shared value is just a value for a style that you're gonna animate so in this case they are using for the width and whenever we change the value for the width for this view this is going to be animated and the way we can use that is we define a function that will change the value of the width and whenever user presses that this is going to be animated and we can use other functions to change the style of the animation like in this example you can see they are using with spring method that will change the animation style to have a spring like motion so let's see how this example is working when I click on this button this is going to animate like this okay this is looking cool now let's see how they are doing it they have defined a shared value for the width and when user presses this they are going to change the width value with the width spring motion and here this view is animating with the styled width so we're gonna use the same configuration but for the padding so let's copy this library and as I've already installed this so I don't need to install it let's copy the import statement here now we're gonna use a shared value for the padding of the rings so let's add ring 1 padding and by default it's going to be 0 and uh, let's copy this one more time for the ring 2 padding and uh, let's wrap our view in animated library and ring 1 view as well now instead of this padding we're going to use the animated padding that we just created so let's add ring 1 padding as well now when I save this the rings will be gone because we are using a zero padding for now. So let's add a use effect hook so that when component mounts we will add a padding to these rings. So let's add a set timeout function because we are going to add the padding after a certain time. First we are going to change the ring 1 padding with the value of HP5 that we were using before. But it's going to be changed after 100 milliseconds like this and let's use our with spring method so that it has a spring like animation okay now let's reload the application to see the animation in action now you can see the springy animation so let's add this one more time for our second ring and let's change the values and this is going to be animated after 300 milliseconds and you will see this expanded because this was already registered and it's running again and again so what we're gonna do is set this ring padding to zero whenever it, it's inside use effect hook for the first ring and for the second ring as well so now you can see the smooth animation when the component mounts so let's reload okay looking perfect now whenever user reloads the application this springy animation will make the first impression look good so now we're gonna move to home screen after a certain time so let's add our navigation hook use navigation and uh, this is const okay and uh, let's add a set timeout for this one as well and we're gonna use the navigate method with the path name as home and this is going to be executed after 2.5 seconds okay when we reload the application you will see after 2.5 seconds we are moving back to the home screen let's see it again okay so now let's move to home screen and start designing our home screen uh, let's remove this and we're going to have a flex one and background of white and let's remove this as well we're going to have a status bar of dark color so let's add dark color like this okay we can see the status bar now let's add a scroll view because we're going to have all the content inside the scroll view let's hide the vertical bars and let's add a content container style of padding bottom of 50 okay now let's add a class name and give it a vertical spacing of 6 so that all the elements will have a vertical spacing and let's add a padding top of 40 so that the content won't conflict with the notch area and here we're going to add an avatar and the bell icon side by side 
so let's add a view and give it a class name of margin horizontal of 4 and flex row justify between and item center and a margin bottom of 2 okay now let's add an image component and give it a source from our assets folder I've already added this avatar image it's found in images slash avatar dot png and uh, let's add a style and give this the height and for the height we're going to use the responsive height so let's copy this library that we were using before to this component and let's use the HP value of 5 so that it will have a height of 5% of the overall height and width of 5.5 and when I save this you can see the avatar icon now on the other side we're gonna use an icon and that we can use from the hero icons so we need to install a hero icons library this is called react native hero icons make sure you install this also make sure you install react native svg as well otherwise it won't work and this is how you can import the icons from outline mini and solid icons and you can use them like this if you go to their main website you can find all the icons that they have and use whatever icon that you want so let's use a bell icon here i think we need to import it manually so let's import it import from react native hero icons from outlined ones and let's import the bell icon like this and let's use it here and give this a size of hp4 and the color for this icon will be gray Let's save this and we can see the icon okay so next thing we're gonna do is add some greetings and a punchline so let's add a comment for that first and let's add a view with a class name of margin horizontal 4 and a spacing vertical of 2 and a margin bottom of 2 as well now let's add a text here and here it's going to say hello Naman which is my actual name it's not Nomi that's my nickname so let's give it a style and have a font size of HP 1.7 and let's add a class name as well to give this a color text neutral of 600 okay looking nice now let's add another view for our punchline and inside this view we're going to have a text view that will say make your own food now let's add a class name to this text and add a font semi bold class to make this semi bold and a text neutral of 600 like this and let's add a style to give this a responsive font size of 3.8 hp 3.8 like this and uh, next we're gonna add another text view and this will say stay at home but first let's give it a responsive font size of HP 3.8 um, let's just copy the class name from this view because this is going to have the same style and this will say stay at home but uh, we're gonna style the home stacks differently so let's wrap it around another text view like this and let's add a color for this home as text ember 400 like this okay it's looking good now let's add another view for our search bar so let's add a comment now let's add another view with the margin horizontal of 4 flex row item center and rounded full because it needs to be rounded and we're going to have a subtle background color of black so let's have a background black divided by 5 and a padding of 6 pixels like this now you can see the bar here so let's add a text input inside this and let's have a placeholder for search any recipe and a color for this placeholder will be gray and let's add a style to make the responsive font size of HP 1.7 and let's add a class name flex one so that it takes for the full space and text base margin bottom of one padding left of three and a tracking wider 
like this and when we save this you can see the search bar here so the next we're gonna add another view for a search icon so let's add a class name of background white rounded full and a padding of three and let's add a magnifying glass icon which is here let's import it and give this a size of HP 2.7 and a stroke width of 3 and a color of gray okay now the search bar is complete and as you can see we have a beautiful search bar and next thing we're gonna do is add our categories section so let's add a comment for that categories and let's add a view and we're going to have a component for the category that we'll be using here so let's add a component categories inside components folder and let's add a functional component categories and now we need to import this inside home screen so let's add categories this will auto import and when I save this you can see the categories here so let's move to categories and start designing first we're gonna use a scroll view here and this will be horizontal and let's hide the horizontal indicators to false and let's have a class name of spacing horizontal of 4 because each category will have a horizontal spacing and let's add a content container style of padding horizontal of 15 like this now let's save this and inside this we're going to have the category list from our api endpoint but we're not using the api right now so now we're gonna use the dummy data for now and i have dummy data inside the constants file as you can see here is the category data and each category has a name and an image this is the meal, meal data that we're going to use later so for now we're going to use category data so let's just import it here import from our constants and we're gonna use the category data and we're gonna loop through all of the category data and we're gonna have a category and an index for the category and we're going to return a touchable opacity first we're gonna add a key as the index and then let's add a class name for flex and item center and spacing vertical of one because we're going to have a category image and the category name so let's close this and let's add another view and give this a class name of rounded full and a fixed padding of six pixels now let's add an image component inside this view for the category image and let's add a uri of category dot image this is from the dummy data and let's add a style and give this a width of responsive uh, we need to import this library so let's go to home screen and let's copy this hp and wb methods and import it here and we're gonna have a responsive height of hp 6 and a height of hp 6 as well and now let's give it a class name of rounded full and let's save this and now we will have our three categories from our dummy data so that we can scroll through but later on we will have a lot of categories when we use the api so let's add a text view for our category name and let's give it a class name of text neutral 600 and a style with the responsive font size of hp 1.6 now let's close it and add a category name inside this okay now we have a category name so now we need to have an active category when we click on a category and that we're gonna implement from our home component so that we can use it later for our api data so let's move to home screen and have a state for active category and set active category and by default we will have a state for the category as beef because we have a beef category inside categories data and we're gonna pass these values to our category component set active category as well like this and now we can use these values inside categories component to make a category active let's import them from props 
like this and now first thing we're gonna do is when we click on this button stretch of opacity we're going to set an active category so let's add, add on press method and we're gonna set active category to category dot name and this will set the category now we need to check if the current iteration is an active category so let's use an is active variable and see if the category dot name equals the active category then we're going to have a different class name for the button so let's add active class button and if it's active then we're going to have a background of amber 400 otherwise we're going to have a background of black divided by 10 like this okay now we can use this active button clause to the view inside the shopper opacity so that when it's active it's going to have a different background color let's add it here okay uh, this needs to be rounded dash full okay like this now when we select a category this is going to be activated and all the other categories will have a different color next we're gonna add animation to this categories component so let's use our animated library and if you scroll down you will see layout animation and we're gonna use entering and exiting animation as you can see here so the way we can use animation is we need to wrap the view with animated and add entering and exiting properties like this and we can use so many animation styles like fade in fade out and all the other styles then we can use a duration function for the duration of the animation and we can also use this springify animation that we used before for our rings and the welcome screen so let's use this library first we need to copy this import statement and uh, import it into our categories component and we need to import animated library and for the entering animation we are going to use fade in down animation and let's add animated dot view for this container view and let's add entering property this will be fade in down with the duration of 500 so let's add that and when i save this you will see the animation but we're going to have a spring like animation so let's add springify method as well now when i reload you will see the welcome animation and when the categories load we have the spring like animation so now we need to add our api to fetch all the categories data so this is the mail db api and we can use the free api for getting all the categories so first we're gonna use the categories api and the category api is here we're gonna use this api so let's move to our application and use this api let's move to home screen and here we need to create a function get categories and this will be an async function and let's add our try cache blocks and let's add cache block and if we get any error we'll just console log the error message error dot message and now we're gonna use axios to make an api call i've already installed the axios you need to make sure you install axios it's no big deal just run the command npm install axios this will do the thing so let's use a variable response and we need to await for the response and let's use axios dot get method and inside this we're going to pass the api endpoint which is here let's just copy this and add this here and let's change this ww to https when we get the response in axios we get the data inside data property so let's check if we get the data we will store the data in categories so let's add a state for the categories to store all the categories data so let's have categories and a set categories method and initially it will have a value of an empty array so in here uh, let's console log the response to our data to see if you are actually getting the categories data so let's add response dot data and we need to call this api when the component mounts so let's uh, use our use effect hook without the dependencies so that it acts as a component did mount method and inside this let's call get categories method and let's save this okay so in the console you can see we got all the categories and here are all the categories but it's a mess so let's just format this data let's copy this first and use a json formatter json formatter 
and let's copy this here okay so it's not looking good the json is broken somehow uh, let's call this api in the browser let's just copy this and use it here now let's copy this data and uh, just replace it here okay it's looking good now make pretty and you can see we have the categories array inside data this has category category thumbnail and category description so now we can use this data into our application so let me just make this a little small like this and now we need to set the categories here with the response dot data dot categories because we have a categories array inside data property and let's remove this so now we need to pass the categories inside categories component so that we can use it to replace the dummy data now let's move to categories and receive the categories from the props and let's replace the dummy data with this actual categories now we're gonna change some properties because the categories from the api have different properties so let's remove this image to string category thumbnail um, let's just copy this from the api this is called string category thumb let's just copy it here and uh, the name is string category so let's change that and when i save this you will see the categories just change and now we're getting the live data from the api but our active category is not working because we're still using category dot name so let's change that to string category in here when we are setting the active category and also when we are checking for the active category so now when i save this you will see the active category as beef because this was the initial value and when i change the active category it's also working as well now let's reload the application and this is a welcome animation but the categories animation won't work because this view was already rendered when we got the api data so we need to make sure that we only render this whenever we get the api data for the categories so let's move to home screen and here we need to make a condition when the categories length is greater than zero only then we're going to render this categories component and then we will see the animation so let's reload the welcome screen and now we can see the animation because it's only being rendered when we get the api data for categories the image fetching is a little slow but don't worry about it we'll fix that later so next we're gonna add another view for our recipes at the bottom so let's add a comment recipes and here we're gonna add a view and inside this we're going to have a component for the recipes so let's create a component recipes and add a functional component change this to recipes and let's import it here and let's save this now you can see the recipes component here let's move to recipes and start designing let's give this a class name of margin horizontal of 4 and a spacing vertical of 3 and uh, let's add a style for this recipes text to give this a responsive font size of hp3 uh, but let's copy the hp and wp methods from home component to here and let's give it a font size of hp3 so that it's responsive now let's add a class name to make it semi bold and a text color of text neutral 600 like this now we're going to have another view for all the recipes so let's add a view and inside this we're going to have a masonry layout and for that we're going to use a component that is called masonry layout uh, here it is so we need to install this library i've already installed this if you go to their github repo you will see all the installation and usage process this is how you can install it and this is the demo of the project and uh, these are all the props that you can pass to this component and this is how you can use it you have the data key extracted number of columns and all these properties so let's import this library to our application let's just copy this import statement and uh, use it here now we're gonna copy the whole component with all the properties so let's copy it here and we need to format it like this and for the data we're going to use dummy data for now that i showed you before it's called meal data from our constants file we have the name and the image for each meal 
and uh, this is in TypeScript so let's remove this type and we're going to have two columns render this card now we don't need this property let's comment this this one and this one as well not sure what this one does but anyway so now next we're gonna add a card for our recipe so let's add a recipe card and we're gonna receive an item as a recipe and an index and for now let's return a view to see if it's all working let's add a view and a text view inside this that will say recipe and now we're gonna change this item card item to recipe card and we're gonna pause the item and an index which we can get from this props as i variable so it will be in the i variable and we need to pause this i as an index and when i save this you will see a two column masonry layout now let's add data into this recipe card let's remove this and add a pressable later we need to navigate to other component when we press this so let's add a style with the width of 100 percent and a class with the flex justify center and margin bottom of four and a spacing vertical of one like this and uh, let's add an image component and uh, this will have a uri of item dot image and that will be the recipe image let's add a style with the width of 100 percent like this and a height of hp 35 like this and let's add a class name as well to have a subtle background color of black divided by five and when i save this you will see all the recipe images from our dummy data currently we have five recipes so you can see all the images and uh, let's add a border radius for all the images let's add border radius of 35 okay all the images are rounded and they are looking good now you can see there is no space in between these two columns and to have that we are gonna add a padding for odd and even items and for that we are going to use a variable that will check if this item is even or not. So let's add a variable is even and the condition will be index modulus 2 equals 0 that will mean this item is even or not and using this we can add padding left for all the items and if it's even we don't want to add padding left otherwise we're going to have a padding of 8 pixels and this will add padding for all the right items similarly we're going to have a padding right for all the right items so let's add padding right and check if it's even true then we're going to have a 8 pixels of padding otherwise zero now we have a little spacing between two columns now if you are familiar with the masonry layout this is not how a masonry layout looks like in the masonry layout we have different height and widths for all the items now we're gonna make this layout masonry using the index to have a different height for every third item in the list so let's use index and if the index modulus by 3 equals 0 that means we're going to have a different height for this item which will be hp25 like this and when I save this you will see for every third item we have a different height and it's looking like a masonry layout now we're gonna have a recipe name under this image so let's add a text view and let's add a class name of font semi bold margin left of 2 and a color will be neutral 600 like this and inside this we're going to have the recipe name which will be item dot name and when I save this you will see the names of all the recipes but some of the names are too big so we're gonna fix that first we're gonna check if the name length exceeds the number of 20 characters then we're gonna slice it from 0 to 20 and add three dots otherwise if it's lower than 20 characters then we're gonna just show the item name okay so now all the names are looking good now let's make this text responsive as well so let's add a style to this text view and let's add a font size of hp 1.5 so that it's responsive okay looking good now the next thing we're gonna do is add animations to these recipes so let's move to categories and copy this library let's copy it here 
now we're gonna change this view to be animated so let's add animated here and we're going to have an entering animation and for this one we're going to have a fade in down animation with a delay delay is very important because we're gonna animate each recipe one after another so we're gonna add a 100 millisecond delay then we're going to have a duration for the animation which will be 600 milliseconds you can already see the animation now we're gonna use another method called springify to have a spring like animation and uh, now we're also gonna have another property on springify which will be damping function of value 20 if you want to learn more about react native reanimated you can go to their website and you can see all the properties and all the animation i'm using damping property you can see mass stiffness and all the other properties damping just means how quickly the spring stops moving so you can use all of these properties in your application so let's reload the application now we have a nice springy animation for the recipes but all the recipes just disappeared when we call the data for the categories and uh, let me show you one more time when we get the data for the categories all the recipes just disappeared and this is the issue with the masonry layout component i don't know why it's happening but when we get the data and have an update in the parent component all the data just disappeared in the masonry layout i don't know why it's happening but one way to fix this is only show this masonry layout when we get the categories data so we're gonna use this way to fix this and pass the categories to recipes component but if you know how to fix this just comment down the solution and i'll update the repo so let's import the categories from the props and using the categories if the categories length equals zero that means we have no categories then we're gonna show null otherwise we're gonna show the masonry layout so let's copy the masonry layout and paste it here let's format this now when i reload the application you will see the masonry layout will load after the categories data and the animation is working smoothly now the categories api is already implemented now we need to call the recipes api to get all the recipes data so let's move to home screen and copy this get categories method we're gonna change this to get recipes and this method will receive a category name category that will be by default beef if we don't pass any category and for the api we are going to use filter by category api this is the api so let's just copy this api and use it inside this function uh, sorry we need to use it inside get recipes method in here and we need to change the last parameter to the category that we are passing to this function and we need to change this www to https and this will be got recipes and we're gonna comment this for now and let's uncomment this console log now let's call this method inside use effect hook to see if we are getting the data and we don't need to pass anything by default this will use beef so we got the data in the console so as you can see we got recipes now let's try to format this to see what kind of data that we are getting let's call the api here again and we got the data now select this and format this using json formatter okay so we got the meals array and each array object has a string meal property and a string meal thumb property we only need these two properties so let's minimize this and let's create a state to store all of this data let's create our recipe state and set recipes and by default this will have an empty array value like this and inside this if statement we're going to set this recipes data and we got the recipes data inside meals array so let's set response dot data dot meals this will set the recipes now we can pass these meals data to the recipe components so that we can replace the dummy data so let's pass this meals in the recipes component and save this okay meals doesn't exist uh, because we use recipes let's just change this to meals set meals and when we get the data this needs to be set meals like this and hopefully we don't have any errors this time now let's move to recipes and show these meals but first we're gonna make a check here so that if the category's length is zero or the meals length is zero we're gonna show null otherwise we're gonna show masonry layout and let's pause these meals instead of the dummy data 
and this here will be the id of the meal and for that we have id meal property so let's change that now let's move to recipe card and change some of the properties this item will have the image property as string thumb meal so let's change that and for the name we have property string meal so let's copy this and replace the name with string meal now when I save this you will notice all the recipes will change and all of these recipes are coming from the API data for the beef category and all of these recipes are loading one by one so the next thing we're gonna do is add the feature where you select the category and this will load all the recipes for that category so let's move to home screen and start implementing that let's move to home screen and uh, let's create a function that will handle changing the category handle change category and this will receive a category that is selected now the first thing we're gonna do is get the recipes for this category so let's call get recipes with this category and then we're gonna set active category as this category and we also gonna set meals to an empty array whenever a new category is selected and we're going to pass this method to categories component instead of this set active category so let's replace this with handle change category and this one as well and let's move to categories component and change this set active category in both places to handle change category now this is going to work hopefully now what this will do is when user clicks on any category first it will get all the recipes for this category then it will set the category and set the meals to empty array so let's click on beef and now we got all the recipes for the beef category and if i click on dessert we will get all the recipes for the dessert category now when the recipes are loading we need to show a loading state and for that we're going to create another component in the components folder loading and let's create a facing functional component and change this to loading and let's add a class name for this container to flex1 and flex justify center and item center and inside this we're going to use a built-in component it's called activity indicator and we need to pass all the props here that will pass from the parent component it can have a size and a class name so it will pass from the parent component okay now let's use this inside recipes component and when we don't have any category or any meals data we're going to show this loading state so let's add the loading here let's import it and save this now when we click on a category you will see the loading state but it's very small so let's add a property size with a large value and a class name with a margin top of 20 so that it has a space at the top now when we click on a category the loading state is looking good and all the recipes are loading so let's refresh the application we have a welcome screen and we have all the categories and recipes coming from the live api you might have noticed all the image fetching is pretty slow because it's loading from a uri so we're gonna create a component and fix that we're gonna cache all the images so that we don't have to call the uri again and again so let's create an image component inside helpers and here i'm just gonna copy and paste a code for this component and i'll just quickly explain this code so here we have a cached image component that has a state with a cached source that is by default null and it receives a uri in the properties next you will see inside the use effect hook we have a function called get cached image and it's called inside this use effect hook first it will check the cached image data from async storage by the way you need to install this library this is the library you need to make sure you install it and if it gets the data for the cached image then it's going to set the cached image source uri otherwise it's going to fetch the response using this uri and convert this response to base 64 data then it's going to set this data into async storage so that it don't have to fetch this uri data again and again then after setting this this will set the cache source to this base 64 data and uh, at the last we are returning this animated image with the cache source and all the properties that will pass to this component so that we can animate it later i'm sure i'm able to explain it briefly now we're gonna use this component inside this recipes and categories component so let's move to recipes component 
and instead of this image let's just comment this and let's use this cached image and here we're gonna pass some properties let's just copy all the properties from image component let's close this and we need to pass the uri not the source so let's pass uri as item string thumbnail like this now when I save this it's going to cache all these images so that we don't have to wait for all the images to be fetched now let's refresh the app it's gonna take a little time to cache all of these images because we have a lot of images for all the recipes and the categories but once it does that we don't have to wait for the images and we will have a smooth user experience now when this cached image component is rendered when we pass the uri what happens is first it checks if we have this image in the local storage then we're going to return this image we don't need to call this uri and get the response now let's move to our categories and implement this cached image component as well let's comment this and add our cached image component and let's just copy all the properties to this component let's close this and we need to change this source to uri and pass the category string category thumbnail like this and save this and all the categories are now being cached so let's refresh and see now as you can see we got all the images loaded and now we don't have to wait for all the images and we have a very smooth user experience and all the cool animations okay so our home component is also finished we have fetched the categories and recipes and we have added image caching and all the cool animations now the next thing we're gonna do is move to our recipe details screen when we click on our recipe so when we click on this card we should be navigated to the recipe details screen which we haven't created yet so let's create a screen recipe details screen and let's add a basic function inside this and save this now we need to add this to app navigation so let's copy the welcome route and change this to recipe detail and we also need to import recipe detail screen let's save this now let's move to recipes and we need to add an on press method on this pressable and we need to move to the recipe detail screen but we need to use navigation so let's add navigation into the parent component we don't want to define this navigation inside recipe card because otherwise it's going to be declared again and again so let's pass the navigation to recipe card like this and then we're going to receive the navigation from the props and then on this method we're going to navigate to this new route which is recipe detail we also going to pass the recipe data which is in item variable like this now when we click on this recipe card we should be moving to the recipe details screen so let's move to recipe details screen and start designing first we're gonna receive the props and check if we are getting the recipe item data that we are passing from the recipes component and we can get it from props.route.params so if i console log this you will see in the console we are getting the recipe data we're gonna save it inside an item variable so that we can use it later to fetch the recipe details now let's create a scroll view so that all of our content will be in a scrollable and let's give it a class name of background white and flex one so that it takes full space and let's hide the vertical scroll bars as well so let's vertical scroll bar indicators to false and a content container style with a padding bottom of 30 okay so here we're gonna use the status bar component to make all of our status bar fonts to dark sorry white because we're gonna show our recipe image here so we need to make all the fonts white like this and here we're gonna show the recipe image and let's add a view for that and give it a class name of flex row and justify center now we're gonna use the cached image component that we created previously so let's import that and give this a uri property which will be i believe item dot string mail thumb and give this a style of wp uh, we need to import this library so let's just copy this from home screen let's copy this line in here and let's give it a width of wp98 because we're gonna have a white border around this so let's leave a space for that and the height of hp50 
and a border radius of 53 and let's save this and see what it looks like okay so we have an error string mail thumb of undefined um, okay it needs to be params not param so make sure you don't make this mistake let's see if it works this time okay we can see the image now we're gonna reduce the border radius at the bottom so let's add border bottom left radius which will be 40 and a border bottom right radius uh, sorry this should be right radius of 40 as well and a little margin top of 4 pixels so that we have a little white border around this image like this looking good so now we're gonna add a back button so let's add another view this will be a back button so let's add a view and give this a class name of w full so that it takes full width and absolute because it goes over the image flex row justify between and item center now let's add a touchable opacity and inside this we're going to have an icon and the icon name is called chevron left icon from the outline ones and let's give it a size of hp 3.5 and a stroke width of 4.5 and let's add a specific color of amber like this and let's save this okay we can see the icon at the very top so let's give it a padding top of 40 so that it will push it a little down like this you might be wondering why i didn't use the safe area view component because i tried it already and it was conflicting with our animation so that's why i went with the padding top this works fine as well so now let's add a style to this touchable opacity and give it a class of padding 2 rounded full and a margin left of 5 and a background of white so now it's looking good so now we're gonna copy this one more time to have a favorite icon like this and we're gonna use a hard icon here from the outline but we'll change that later so let's change this to solid icons let's just copy this and remove this icon and we need to import this from the solid icons now let's save this uh, art icon okay we need to remove this art icon from the outline ones as well okay so now we need to give this a color which will be gray and instead of margin left we're going to have a margin right like this and now we need to be able to toggle it so let's have a state for is favorite and set is favorite by default it will have a false value and when we toggle it it's going to be red so let's have a dynamic value here when is favorite is true we're going to have a red color otherwise it's going to be gray okay and we can toggle it using this button so let's add set is favorite to the inverse of is favorite value like this now it should be toggled okay now it's working now we need to make this back button working as well so let's add an on press method and here we're gonna use our use navigation hook so let's declare that use navigation and uh, we're gonna use the go back method here let's save this and test this out okay our back functionality is working and we are moving to the previous screen now we're gonna add some description for this recipe but for that we need to call the api to fetch the data so let's just copy an api call from get recipes let's just copy this function and paste it here now this function is gonna receive an id of the meal so let's remove the category and replace this with the parameter id and that we're gonna pass to this url to fetch the meal data now let's see which api we can use to fetch the meal data okay so we have a full meal details id okay let's copy this and test this in a browser let's just run this here and now we have the meal data let's just copy this and format this to see what type of data that we are getting so we have a meals array with the meal data we have id meal string meal which will be the name category area of this recipe instructions and all these string ingredients and measures in a very weird format but we'll fix that later now we have all the data that we need to show in our application so let's copy this api 
and use it in our application let's just copy this and replace our category api like this and replace ww with https and the i will be the id that we're going to pass this function and let's change the name to get meal data now let's call this function to see if we're getting the data and we're gonna do that in use effect hook with an empty dependency array so that it runs when the component mounts get meal data and we're gonna pass the item dot id meal which we are getting in the item so let's uncomment this and comment this and let's change this comment to got meal data so that we can see if you are getting the data axios doesn't exist we need to import the axios library as well so we can make this api call okay now let's save this and as you can see in the console we are getting the data already and the data has an meals array that you can see here same to the previous result that we saw in the browser like this meals array and the object has all the meal data so now we need a state to store this meal data let's create a meal state and set me by default it's going to be null and when we get the data from the api we're going to store it here this should be the first object from the meals array so we're going to use set meal this will be the first object now it should be saving the data in the meal now let's add a loading state for our loading component as well loading and set loading and by default it's going to be true and uh, when we get the data from the api we're going to set it false in here when we set the meal and we can use this loading to show the loading here here we're going to show the meal description so let's add a comment and using this loading state we're going to show the loading let's import the loading component and give this a size of large and a class name of margin top which will be 16 and when the loading is false that means we have the meal data so we're gonna have a view and for now let's add a text view that will say display meal data okay so we see the loading and loading stop and we got display meal data that means our api is successfully getting the data and setting it into the state now let's design this and add a class of padding horizontal 4 flex and justify between this is going to be a column view with a lots of data spacing vertical of 4 and a padding top of 8 and here we're gonna add the name and the area of this recipe so let's add a comment first then let's add a view with a class name of spacing vertical of 2 and let's add a text view that will say mail dot string mail which will be the name of the mail let's save this now we can see the mail name and let's add a font size of hp3 also let's add a class name to have a fonts bold flex one so that it takes full space and a text color of neutral 700 like this now we have a bigger meal name now let's just copy this text view for the meal area and we're gonna change the font size to hp2 and fonts bold to fonts medium and a text color from 700 to 500 now we need to change this to string area and this will display the area for this recipe and we are not using the dummy data we're using the live data from this api now let's add another view for all the miscellaneous data and that will include all the calories and time to cook this meal so let's add a comment and then add a view and give it a class name of flex row and a justify round okay and let's add another view inside this and give it a class name of flex and round it full with a background of amber 300 and a padding 2 now we're gonna add one more view for our icon so let's add a view and give this a style with the height of hp 6.5 and a width of hp 6.5 as well 
and let's give it a class name with a background of white rounded full and flex item center and justify center so that it's centered and here we're gonna add a clock icon and that we can import from the outline icons and let's give it a size of hp4 and a stroke width of 2.5 and a specific color of gray now let's save this and now we can see the clock icon now we're gonna add some text below this icon and let's add a view after this view and let's give it a class name of flex item center spreading vertical of two and a spacing vertical of one and here we're gonna add our text views let's add this text view and give it a font size of hp2 and let's add a class name with a fonts bold and text neutral 700 class and this will say 35 minutes and uh, we will move minutes to another text and this will say minutes and we're gonna change the font size to 1.3 now it's looking good now we're gonna copy this one more time to have another data so let's just select this and copy this below and we're gonna change the icon to users icon to show how many servings this icon and uh, this recipe can have three servings and let's add a servings icon here like this and let's copy this one more time and this time we're gonna use a fire icon to show the calories for this recipe and we're gonna change the calories to 103 and this will say calories and let's copy this one last time and this will show if the recipe is easy to cook so we're gonna change the icon to square 3 stack 3d icon and we don't need numbers for this so let's remove this and this will say easy okay so this view is complete now i know this data is not coming from the api but this looked good in our design so i'm just gonna leave it like that and next we're gonna add another view so let's add another view for our ingredients let's add a comment first and let's add a view with the class name of spacing vertical 4 and let's add a text view with a responsive font size of hp 2.5 and let's add a class name as well with the fonts bold and flex 1 and a text color will be neutral 700 and this will say ingredients okay now let's add another view with the class name of vertical spacing 2 and a margin left of 3 now here we're gonna show the ingredients and you can see in the data we have this very weird format for these ingredients and all the measures but we know that we will get total 20 ingredients and total 20 measures but we need to have a way to check if we have a value for this ingredient so we're gonna create a function that will return the indexes for all the ingredients that have values so let's add a function let's name it ingredients indexes and we're gonna receive the meal data as a parameter and first we're gonna make a check if we don't have meal data we're gonna return an empty array of indexes otherwise we're going to create an indexes array and we're gonna create a loop that will run from 1 to 20 indexes so it will start from 1 and it will run until we have the index 20 and inside this loop we're gonna check if a certain index in the data have a value then we're gonna push that index in the indexes array let's use our i variable for the index and if we have value let's just push it inside this array now what's gonna happen is it will check this index like if we have a value at one or two index it's going to push that into this array otherwise it's not going to push the index if we don't have the value so now let's return the indexes from this function and now we can use this function to have a list of all the indexes now let's call this function and pause the meal data 
and this will return the indexes and i will be the index so let's return a view with the key as i and let's have a class name for flex row and spacing horizontal of 4 let's close this now inside this view we're going to have another view for a dot so let's create a view with a style of height hp 1.5 and a width of HP 1.5 as well and let's give it a class name with the background of amber 300 and rounded full because it's going to be a rounded dot and let's save this now we can see the dot for all the ingredients that we are getting now let's add our ingredients text and all the measures so let's add another view and give this a class name of flex row and a spacing horizontal of 2 let's close this and here we're gonna add a text view first we're gonna show the measures so let's add a variable male with a dynamic index using our i variable let's save this now we have all the measures for all the ingredients so now let's copy this one more time to have our ingredients as well okay now we can see the ingredients and all the measures so let's design it class name of fonts extra bold and a text color of neutral 600 okay now let's just copy this class name for our ingredient as well let's copy it here and we're gonna change the fonts to medium okay uh, let's make our measures a little darker now we're gonna select both of the text to have a responsive font size for both of them so let's add a style with a font size of HP 1.7 okay looking good now next we're gonna add some instruction for how to cook this recipe and uh, let's add another view let's just copy the ingredients view and we're gonna change it so let's change this to instructions and let's change the comment as well and let's move this view because we're going to have a text view for the instructions and let's save this um, where did the ingredients heading go uh, it's right here but it's not showing strange now let's go back and see again uh, okay it's here maybe there was a glitch so let's move forward and add a text view with a responsive font size of HP 1.6 and let's add a class name and let's give this a text color of neutral 700 and here we're gonna add the variable string instructions from our meal data so let's add that okay so now we can see the instructions area as well so next we're gonna add another view for our YouTube video for this recipe so let's add a comment recipe video and here we're gonna add the recipe video not all of these recipes have the YouTube video so let's see in the console what data property do we have for this YouTube video let's move to another recipe and once we get the data we should be getting the YouTube video so here it is we can use this URL to show the YouTube video so let's minimize this first we're gonna check if we have this string YouTube only then we're gonna show this view so string YouTube and this view and this view will have a class name of spacing vertical of 4 let's close this view and inside this view we're gonna show a heading so let's just copy the heading from instructions let's copy it here and change this to recipe video and now we should be seeing the recipe video here uh, maybe this recipe don't have a video let's move to another recipe uh, this one don't have it either um, let's see here that's strange 
maybe we made a mistake so this should be string youtube okay so there was a mistake now we can see the recipe video here so now let's add another view for our video and here we're gonna use a third party library to show a youtube video and that library is called react native youtube iframe this is the library make sure you install this library i've already installed it and you need to also make sure that you install react native web view as well otherwise this won't work so let me just copy and paste the import statement for this library in here and this is the library so let's just use it here youtube iframe and it has a property like video id and you can give it a height and width let's use hp30 for the height and let's close it now we don't have a video id we have a full youtube video link so we're gonna create a method to get youtube video id and we're gonna pass this link to this function and the property we have is string youtube let's create this function we're gonna pass the url and we're gonna check if we have the video id using regex so let me just copy and paste the code so here we have the regex that will check if we have a value after v variable and if we have a match we will get the value and return otherwise we're going to return null as you can see in the console we have a youtube link and we have the youtube video id after the v parameter so let's just copy this id and see if our component is working let's just comment this and add a video id using this id that we just copied and if i save this you will see we have a youtube video at the bottom and if you click on it it will be played but i shouldn't be playing it because of the copyright issues but now we know that it's working so let's just comment this and uncomment this and let's remove this now it should be working so let's move to other recipes and see if we have a youtube video for them let's go to this recipe and here we have a recipe video for this now next we're gonna add some animations for this recipe image and we can do that from our recipes component so let's move to that and here we're gonna add a property to our animated image and the property is called shade transition tag and that needs to be a unique value so we're going to use the meal name and that can be found in item dot string meal now when we click on this card item it's going to be animated when we are moving from one screen to another but it's important that the image on the next screen needs to have the same tag as well so because we have the item data on this detailed screen so let's just copy this tag here and we have the string mail in the item so let's just save this and test this out so i think we need to reload the application so let's reload now when we click on the card item you will see how it smoothly navigates to the other screen with this animation i just really love how smooth the animation is when you click on a recipe and it moves to the screen now let's move to details screen and next thing we're gonna animate is all of this data and all these buttons so first we need to import the library so let's go to recipes and let's copy this library and paste it here now we're gonna animate our back button so let's add animated view here and we're going to use the fade in animation on entering not the fade in down fade in so let's import fade in animation and we're going to have a delay of 200 milliseconds so that it animates after the image animation and let's add a duration of 1000 okay now when we click on a recipe you can see all the buttons just fades in now let's add animation for this recipe area and name and we're going to have a entering animation we're going to use fade in down with a duration of 700 milliseconds and we're also going to use the springify method to make the motion like spring and we're going to use the damping of 12 and i've already explained the damping value it controls the motion now the animation is working so let's just copy this and move to next view and let's copy it here uh, let's close all of these views and let's add our closing view animated dot view and here we need to add a delay so that it animates after the name let's add a 100 milliseconds delay now it's animating now here on after we're going to add a delay on each view 
because all the animation needs to be animated one after another so let's paste it here and for this one the delay is going to be 200 milliseconds and let's add a closing tag now let's copy this for the instructions so let's copy it here and let's fix the closing tag and the delay for this one should be one two three and it needs to be 300 milliseconds and now we have the last view which is the recipe video so let's copy animation here and let's fix the closing tag and the delay for this one should be 400 milliseconds okay so this screen is also complete and we have animated all of the data so now you can see all of the data just fades in from the down all of the elements animates one after another because of the delay that we added now let me make this bigger and let's do a final demo of the application let's reload and the first thing we see is a welcome screen with a very cool animation then all the categories and all the recipes just fades in if we choose a different category it will load all the recipes for that and then if we open a recipe we will have a very cool animation and all the data for the recipe will just fade in from the bottom so in almost one hour you've learned how to create this beautiful design using tailwind css and how to make it responsive You've learned how to implement third-party APIs using Axios. You've also learned how to implement cool animations in your app using React Native Reanimated. If you guys want me to create more videos on Reanimated, then let me know in the comment section. So with this, our application is complete. And if you find this video helpful, do like the video and subscribe the channel. This really helps me a lot. I haven't implemented the search mail feature, but we have a search bar here. So that is a task for you guys. I've shown you how you can use the API. So I'll leave this search feature up to you guys. And you can contribute to this project because it's open source. And I'll leave the GitHub repo for this project into the video description. So if you still have any questions about anything, you can ask them into the comment section. And I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. So this is it for this video. See you in the next one.